William the Conqueror had recaptured York from the rebels. Now he wanted to teach them a lesson for defying him. He began a brutal campaign of destruction to crush any further resistance, known as the harrying of the North. Villages and crops were destroyed. It is said 100,000 people were killed. With ruthless efficiency, William the Conqueror had secured obedience in his new kingdom. But it wasn't to last. It would be thrown into chaos by his own children. When William the Conqueror died in 1087, his favorite son succeeded him, King William II, known as William Rufus. But 13 years into his reign, disaster struck. While out hunting, he was killed. William's youngest brother took his place as King Henry I. But there was a problem. At the time, Henry's elder brother, Robert, Duke of Normandy, had been on crusade. When he returned, he was furious that Henry had grabbed the throne. From Normandy, Robert attempted to invade England to claim the crown from his brother. But he failed and returned home. In retaliation, Henry struck back. In a reversal of 1066, he crossed the Channel and invaded Normandy, intent on undermining his brother Robert's rule. His first target was Bayer. This rich and splendid city was one of the jewels of Normandy. Henry was to begin his campaign by unleashing his forces on the city. Bayer was about to feel the wrath of the English army. In the brotherly feud over Normandy, King Henry I set out to make an example of Bayeux, a town still loyal to his brother Duke Robert. Henry's archers took up position on high ground outside the city and faced an immediate attack by Robert's cavalry patrol. Having deployed their palings, Henry's archers were well protected against the cavalry charge. They defeated the first patrol. As Henry set his sights on burning Bayeux, more reinforcements arrived to join his army. So 
The English approached Bayeux and saw that its towering stone walls would not be breached by manpower alone. Henry would need siege equipment and a defensible location to construct it. the services of a blacksmith to bolster the siege effort. With a blacksmith on hand, Henry's infantry would soon be ready to construct siege equipment. Churlas, <laughs> <laughs> 
Fende Hesta. Bury your words up. Henry's infantry could now construct battering rams, siege weapons designed to break Gun, open Gun. fortress walls. That timber and shale bed. With the power of battering rams, the English army could crack open Bayer's mighty walls. Yes, sir. Henry's presence on the doorstep of Bayer would not go unanswered. And now his force is braced for an attack by Robert's army. Henry repelled the attack, but he knew that so long as Bayer still stood, the city would not give up the fight. Yes, sir. Look at your big 
Bayer's walls had failed, and Henry's men could now storm the city. Robert's garrison made a last stand to defend Bayer, but Henry would show no mercy in cutting them down and burning their city.
As Bayer burned and the people fled in terror, King Henry basked in the victory over his brother Duke Robert. But Henry would not stop until all of Normandy was back under the English crown. By 1100, the medieval knight was dressed from head to toe in mail. Mail is really like a metal fabric. It moves and behaves like a cloth, but is actually made of hundreds and thousands of interlocking iron rings. It could turn and deflect a sword blade. As an armor, mail didn't work all by itself. It needed the addition of a padded coat The coat absorbed the shock of the blow, whilst the mail turned away the cut. Together, they formed an incredibly effective protection. The first stage in making mail was to create wire to the right thickness. To do this, it was pulled through a drawing plate, which had a series of ever smaller holes, until you got wire of the desired gauge. To make the rings, we wind the wire onto a mandrel. And then we take it off the mandrel and cut the rings. So I've flattened the overlapping ends of the ring and I've pierced a hole through it. And now Nick has to put a rivet in it. The basic construction of mail would be a ratio of four to one. So each ring goes through four of its fellows. Here you can see I've made a set of five, which will then be joined to other sets of five to create a sheet of mail. Mail had to be tailored to a perfect fit. It had to be shaped for feet and legs, arms and hands, and of course the head. A skilled mail maker could make very precise shapes. Of course, for more complicated parts of the body, like elbows, we can actually tailor it in two different directions at the same time. Yeah, so if we fold this in half, we have an elbow. One of the main benefits of tailoring in mail was that it meant a knight didn't have to carry a single ring of extra weight that he didn't need to. 
The male to cover a knight from head to toe required about 200,000 rings. High status knights would have had their mail edged with gold, but most importantly, it had to be functional. Clad in mail with his shield and helmet, the knight was well equipped to face the weapons of the day. While Bayer burned, King Henry pressed his advantage. Seizing key fortifications and buying the loyalty of powerful lords, Henry loosened his brother's grip over Normandy. At Tinchebray in 1106, brother would fight brother for final claim to their father's lands. Determined to claim Normandy and capture his brother, Duke Robert, King Henry besieged the castle at Tinchebray. But the direct assault on the formidable stone castle was failing. Unable to breach the towering walls, the king devised a new plan to capture his brother. Henry would force Robert to defend his lands from attack by raising the villages of Martigny and Fresnes. Yet to be ready for Hestus, at mean a word of Do tell us not to tell He shall lay the young. Who readeth new books? Fort Warde Freckles, mid Baldeness, on us with him. At me no word, Fereth, Fourth Warde Freckes, mid Baldeness. Never did too much in our words! You day is now the dead end! To goad Robert out of his stronghold, Henry's men would burn the village to the ground.
the village of Martigny was destroyed. But still Robert did not emerge to face Henry outside the castle. Henry would have to raise the stakes. Next, he targeted the village of Fresnes. Henry received word that Robert had sent for a fresh army to aid in defending his position at the castle. Henry had to eliminate these new forces before they could combine with the garrison at Tinchebray. Henry could buy reinforcements from nearby allies if he could procure the gold to pay them. Henry paid his ally in Tosny and received a regiment of soldiers. Henry's ally in Bayer sent reinforcements in exchange for gold. By eliminating Robert's incoming army, Henry had thwarted his brother's attempt at strengthening the castle's defenses. No, Tulkes, set it down. Yes, Buscala Hildefus. Here we are, we can. Yes, we are. Yes, we Buscala Hildefus. Yes, Look at we are ready, Frekis. Yes, we are. Fourth ward, Frekis. Mid Balvenes. Who's reading no, Tulkes? He shall lay the yard. Adente to serve. Certes. All is with it. It's living to hear it. He shall lay the yard. He shall. Has been a word of. Henry sent gold to his ally in Brittany, and in return, a detachment arrived to bolster his numbers.
Better aboard and Yerwa. Strabora, Sithes, Abuka, Kutlicha. Gath, Strabora. Garu Upa. Tremet Garu. It is Sitha for Actus. Who readeth new Tullius? Dute is none for death. At the hands of Henry's army, the village of Fren was in ruins. Henry's provocations had paid off. Robert finally emerged from the castle to face his brother in open battle. King Henry's tactic of luring Robert into the open had worked. Henry captured his brother and Normandy was his. Conqueror's sons had resolved their long feud over Normandy, with King Henry resting possession away from his brother. But the French King Louis VI would not accept Henry's heir as the future Duke of Normandy. Henry's fragile power would face its first test, an invasion by the French King.
Henry and his forces made their arrival at Fleury. In the disputed countryside between Normandy and France, a smouldering farmstead gave away the beginnings of a French invasion. At the head of the vast army stood King Louis of France himself. An English scout hastily rode to inform King Henry of England, who was still en route to defend his borders. Hearing of the threat, Villagers and guards fled their English-held towns and retreated to the stronghold of Fleury. Yeah, we're well, we to that day, team. Above all, the English forces in Normandy had been commanded to hold the town of Fleury and await King Henry's arrival. British Earth Militia, far off. Here I thought, man. Off way at that. Zone up. On Muna. Flan goes to the board and get one. You're right, let's get away. Read it. Oh, well, they're dead. Shh. Muscat, yeah, Valentine, yeah. Muscat. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are. Yes, sir. As the village of Cressonville fell, all English hopes lay in holding Fleury for the king's arrival. Shh. Strail, boy. Are you yard. The town of Granville succumbed to the French, and the English were pushed back towards Fleury. Understood. Hey, 
Day. Gabriel Day will do. Lift us, fear us. <laughs> A booga trail border. A booga trail border. Did I hit? Yes. Had a combat on the way. Yes, sir. Yes. All go down. Come on, come on. Garwiga. Farende Nu. Hey, you're in the yard. Read that day. Hester's Commende. Henry and his forces made their arrival at Fleury. Knowing that King Louis himself was on the field, Henry saw his chance to put England's claim to Normandy beyond doubt. Done. 
Look at your beauty ready, Freckes. Fourth ward day, Freckes. Mid Baldeness. King Louis, determined to oust the English from Normandy, began sending attack parties to harass King Henry and his forces. And you work it. Each brew key that. He shall lay the yard. But mean a word of But mean a word. Set it young. Yes, we will. He shall lay the young. It's good to read of new Julius. King Henry's men struck at the French forces and recaptured the town. Flock in they would. Get us to Swinkon, two folk. Off to the Felders. Aye. can eat us young. Aye.
Frackers, intend us no coma mid bay. Frackinitas, let us read it, Knitters. Look at Yawi and Shal Day, the Yaw. Fourth Guarda, Frackers. Mid Balder. Boon for they off. It's fall away, Hester's. Arthur Canita's Yara. Readers, Yara has us. See, they to read it. What we did, they knew. At standard, that will be our new. New Tulkes, set at you. This better man, standard and presenter. Jonas, Yara to Don. Hester's cometh, our way men. It's all stuff. Spare men. Appointed bearers. The men of armies are beaten. Get to the ready for Hestis. All is with him. The debtor to serve. Who breedeth no choice. It's living to hear it. Shall lay the 
With the border towns recaptured, King Henry's claim to Normandy faced only one more obstacle, King Louis and his army. In the humble peasants' fields of Bremeux, two kings would settle their claim to Normandy. Thy will be it all. What needeth be on done? No, Tolkien, to read it, no, Tolkien. And then head to surface. Surface. Reader is he set on ready. Back for bail dawn. Do tell us none more then. What needeth be undone? Holds it on. On been way. If he'll go, block the wood. It is seat up for its liver to hear it. We shall lay the young. All is with me. For the yet they may have bought Boa is a boom. Saddled up, reader is he set on ready. Reader, a wet end of Hester's. Yep, a may be Hester's. Mid 
Ich lebe in Tulgieren. Nu, Tulkes, setzt ja. Du hast es in Ordnung, Tulkes. Nu, Tulkes, setzt ja. Ich bin auch Leiter. Service. Ich lebe in Tulgieren. Alles mit. Here at Hestus. Yet to be ready for Hestus. Do you think it's not for them? Far from home, but rallied by their king, the English army forced a French surrender and put King Louis and his knights to flight. With the impromptu battle ending in resounding victory for the English, King Henry had secured his ancestral lands under the English crown. Norman domination over England was marked by their imposing castles and new laws. But one passion of theirs also impacted the land, hunting. The Norman nobility, both men and women, shared a love of hunting with birds of prey. To preserve their hunting grounds, they took ownership of the land and outlawed hunting by commoners. Falcons hunt by flying to a great height, then dive bombing their prey. They are kept hunting fit using a lure, a pad of leather with bait attached. This prepared them for catching their prey, usually other birds such as rooks and pheasants. While out hunting, a falcon might give chase to its prey far from the party. So, riders would follow them cross-country on horseback to witness the action. After a falcon had caught its prey, it was fed and would not fly again that day. This meant many birds had to be taken on a hunt to keep the nobility entertained. Rather than falcons being carried on horseback, which would jostle them, they were transported on a frame called a cadge. Although falconry was a horseman's sport, hawking was enjoyed on foot. Hawks, unlike falcons, have broad wings and hunt by following their prey in straight flight, often low to the ground through woodland. Hunting by sight, a falcon's vision is highly developed. When not hunting, they were kept calm by putting on a leather hood. The darkness stopped them becoming overstimulated and restless. Lords of the sky, controlled by the lords of the land. Falcons and hawks were symbols of power and status. They were central to Norman identity.